Good morning, Peter McKinnon is one of the best photographers on YouTube and his channel is completely awesome. Lots to tell there, lots to make, lots to create. That's all coming. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. He also has a really, really beautiful website. So in today's rapid website recreations, I thought I'd take his website and try and recreate it in just 30 minutes. It's a beautiful website, let's get into it. Here's the website I'm gonna try and recreate in 30 minutes. It's beautiful, I really love it, and you'll see it's got these menus along the top here. It has a little subtle logo up here. As you scroll, it's got this nice parallax effect as you scroll down. It's got this Ford GT here, it looks very, very beautiful. So I think I've got an idea on how I might be able to recreate that. So here is my plan, and like all good plans, it's written on the back of an envelope. So number one, I want to create the structure on the website, and I'm gonna do that primarily by building my navigation and also setting the home page. Then I also, once I've built the structure, I need to design the home page because the home page has a very different layout to all the other pages. So I need to do the home page second, but I must do the structure first. Then number three, after the home page, I want to do the kind of sub pages templates. I wanna get those laid out. So as ever, on the left-hand side, we've got my website, which is just a blank version of WordPress running the 2023 default theme. And then over on the right-hand side, we've got the Peter McKinnon website, which I'm gonna try and recreate in 30 minutes. I'm gonna start by creating the structure, and I'm gonna do that primarily just by building some blank pages, just these, the shop page, the collabs page, the about page, and the contact page. So I'm just gonna go plus new here, and I'm literally gonna create some new pages. So we've built that. Now I want to go off and actually create this structure along here on our navigation using the full site editor. So back to dashboard, appearance and editor here. And once you're in the editor, just click on the W in the top left of your screen. That'll take you to the site editor menu on the left here where you'll see templates and template parts. We're interested in template parts. So just click on that. And then we just want to go to the header template part here. Now, if we look at the list view, we can see what we've actually got here. We've got a group block with a row block, with a site title block, with a navigation block. But actually the navigation block at the moment doesn't really consist of a menu. So we need to create a menu to kind of put in that navigation block. So you come down here over on the right, just make sure you've got the navigation block selected and just click on create new menu. So we just now need to add the page items that we've added before. So we just search for shop. Now I published these pages, which is why they're showing here shop and we need collabs. So you just search for them and WordPress will find them. So I've got the structure in place. It looks nothing like we need, but that's fine. We've got the menu items along the top here and we've now got the home page as the home page. So I think it's time to now try and design this home page. So actually looking at this, I did think I was going to use the cover block for all of this, but it's not going to work because these are actually proper parallax, whereas the cover block in the cover block you have a fixed background, which doesn't really do this effect how I want it. So I'm going to have to do a search around and see whether there's a Gutenberg block out there that will let me do kind of this subtle parallax effect. Let's go and have a look. Okay, after a bit of searching, I found this. Now, I've never seen this before. It's called Parallax Effects for Gutenberg. It's not called that, but it's for Gutenberg, and it seems to get good reviews from what I can see. It hasn't been updated for a while, but I think it just uses JavaScript, not any kind of third-party library, but we, we can check on that. But I think the thing to do is get it out and see whether it works in the first place. So I've installed the plugin, and let's see how it works. I think it comes as a block, so maybe if I just search for Parallax, there it is, Parallax Section. So I'm guessing it just adds sections into your pages like so, and then gives you some settings, I'm hoping here. Here it is, yeah, cool. So yeah, we get that nice little parallax. Let's just see if we, yeah, it's full width by default. I'm suspecting I can change the background image. So I'm just gonna save this background image over here and just run a really quick test to see whether this is gonna actually fly for me. So background here, click on the plus, And I think hopefully I can change the picture. Yeah, cool, so let's upload that picture. I'm gonna change the background opacity, I guess I wanna, doesn't have so much. Yeah, that's better. It's got a little bit of gradient on it or opacity. Yeah, so now we have a we have a nice subtle parallax. So the secret source to get this to sit flush at the top here, I think, is to use the blank page template. So you just come to templates here, click on page, and then we want to choose the blank page template. That will get rid of anything from the page. Basically, it's just going to show the content in the template. You will notice that there's this white space running along the top here. 
Now you can change this now just using the site editor in 2023. By default, it'll add a little bit of padding to the top of your blocks. To change it, just go to global stars, which you need to go into the templates to actually see. So hopefully one day soon, this will be more obvious where to find it, but it's that little icon there. Just click on that and there are some presets set for the layout. So then we want to go to layout. Now it might look like the top has no padding on it, but it actually does. So just force that with by putting naught in and that'll get rid of any padding from the top of that page. So time to build out this page. All I need to do is delete the existing blocks, which I've already done from this parallax section. And then I'm going to insert the columns block just so I can lay this out, two columns. This left hand column, I'm actually going to put the site logo. Right hand column over here, I'm going to put the navigation block. And then the other thing I'm going to do is once they're in place, I'm going to align them to the middle. Now with the navigation block, you'll see it actually needs a bit of block spacing. So I'm just going to introduce some block spacing like so. And then the final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to align these to the top. So this little icon up here, you can actually align the content to the top and you see it's now aligned nicely to the top. And the final thing I'm going to do here is actually add a little bit of padding to the left and to the right of my menu. Okay, so my attempt is on the left, looking pretty good. This font is a bit heavy, theirs is lighter, Peter's is lighter, so I can change that in the typography settings. But now we move on to this section down here, which I'm just going to replicate what I've done. Essentially, I'm going to add the parallax section, a background image and some text over the top of it. So let's start just by fixing up this text here. It's a little bit bold, whereas Peter's is much lighter and nicer. So I'm going to go down to typography, make sure you selected the navigation block and just choose appearance here. And now you can select here different appearances. Now you'll see there it's gone nice and light. So that's cool. That's done. Let's go back to this next section here. And I'm just going to duplicate my first section for speed because I've got some settings in there kind of that I've already created that I don't need to recreate. There's my second section. And now I can jump in here and actually just remove some of this stuff in here. You'll see it put the default text back in here, but that's all right, we can change that. The next thing we need to do is just align the text in the center. We're gonna edit that text in a minute, but first I'm gonna replace the image. So click on the block settings, click on the little pencil, click a replace here, and now we need our Ford car. So I've changed the text here, so it's got the right text. Stars aren't quite right though, so let's go and fix those up. The typography is still probably a little bit small, so we can make those a little bit bigger here. And we probably want it thinner again, so let's play with that. That's pretty nice. We've got this big gap here. I wanna make this text yellow here, so again, we can just do that by changing here. Now I'm not choosing the exact text, but that's probably close enough, and it looks like it's bold to me. Is it bold? Let's make it bold and see what that looks like. We have this big gap here. So this is where we look at line height here. So choose that one there, choose line height, and we wanna reduce that down, you see, and now we've got them more squished. So we're pretty close. Actually, letter spacing isn't quite right there as well. So we should be able to change that, I think. Yeah, letter spacing here. So let's add a bit more letter spacing between the letters. Pretty good. And now it's just a question of repeating the process. Next up, we've got this really cool YouTube section here with a background video playing, and we are going to use the core Gutenberg cover block for this because that supports background video. I already have a video pre-prepared, and this will just play without any sound, and I just need to make this full width, I think. Here we go, it'll start to play. Now, you might see some discrepancy between the parallax section block and the core Gutenberg blocks. It's just an editor thing. It'll look fine once it's actually published. So I've added the text and spaced it just like I did in the previous block and it looks pretty good. And then the final thing I need to add is just this section down here, which I'm going to do with the heading block and the social icons block. So I think I'm going to actually put this in a group block that will just give me a bit of margin control because I don't want it flush to the block above it. So I'm going to add the group block. This is new. This is so you can choose the layout you want. I just want that layout. And then all I need in, in here is a heading block. So I add the heading block type my words. I will style these in a second, but within the top level group block rather, you can actually come in here and you can set a top margin. So I want to go margin here and then I want to go 
this option here and just add a top margin. You see how I'm just adding a bit of space now. Then I want to align it using our little align tool up here. And I also want to style it because it's the, I want it thinner. So I'm going to go appearance, basically what we did before. So and then I want to go thin text and that looks pretty cool. It's not quite right. Probably want a bit of letter spacing. Actually, let's add a bit of letter spacing as well. Now we could do this globally as well for our headings, but I haven't done that today. And then underneath this, I'm just going to add the social icons block. So probably YouTube. And I will style these as I go. Actually, no, I'll style them at the end. So I'm just going to put in false links today. So that's YouTube. And then I'm going to add another one after this. So just make sure you click on the social icons block to add new ones. And then we want what well, we've got Instagram, I guess. And again, I'm going to put in a false link here. And I will just repeat the process for those. But before I do that, I'm just going to show you how you style them. So you can change the icon color here. That's how you change the icon color and the background color as well. So I've just got my nice icons there and that looks pretty good to me. I'll probably want a bit more. No, the spacing's all right, actually. So I'm just going to add the other icons and that'll pretty much be finished then. Here is the finished page. My attempt is on the left. The official website, the real website is on the right. And I'm pretty happy with it. It looks pretty good. That parallax section is pretty cool. It's very subtle, but it's nice. It's not too crazy. So as we scroll down, you can see we've got parallax working there. There's Paris coming up. See the parallax working. Then we've got the motion graphics section again, looking pretty cool. That little Pete's Pirate Life section looks, oh, I sh the text isn't bold enough, but I could, have I could have rectified that pretty easily. And then we've got this cool YouTube section here. His is a bit higher than mine. I could have changed that in the cover block, but it looks pretty good. And then finally at the bottom, we've got this little social icons follow section. So all in all, for 30 minutes work, or just under actually, I'm pretty happy with how things turned out. I'd probably give myself seven and a half, eight, eight and a half out of 10 that time. There was some quite challenging stuff. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found that really useful. I didn't actually have time to build the shop page and the product page, but I'll be looking at e-commerce sites in the future. So subscribe if you want to see those tutorials. I just ran out of time today. Thank you so much for watching. If you can like this video, it'd be amazing because it really, 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 really helps spread the word of the channel. And also every time you do hit that like button below, our cats get a little treat. <laughs>